actually afterwards was that storage, our customers were seeing a lot of benefits from virtualization on the server side, but they were not seeing the same kind of benefits um, on the storage side. So specifically, um, storage is uh, expensive, uh, it's complex, and there were often applications that could not be virtualized um, for performance reasons, so things like uh, databases, sometimes exchange. So what, what we've done is um, we've actually built a uh, not general purpose storage, we built a special appliance which is exclusively for virtualized environments. So it is, um, does not look like a conventional uh, SAN or, or NAS device. It instead presents only virtual machines and virtual disks to the user. We also, the reason it was the right time to do this was because there's a pretty unprecedented set of technology changes that we were able to take advantage of that have really shaken up the storage uh, industry. So flash memory is a big one, uh, and 10 gigabit ethernet, as well as powerful multi-core processors. So what we've done is we have a, uh, an appliance that is a, a mixture of um, flash and SATA drives and that uh, presents, uh, it's about a terabyte of flash that we also make very efficient use of with um, uh, deduplication, compression, um, <clears throat> and working set calculations. So it's a terabyte of flash, but um, it looks logically like eight and a half terabytes um, of flash because we're, uh, how efficiently we use the system. Um, so the, the second aspect is we are VM aware. Um, so everything is presented as virtual machines, everything as virtual disks. We snapshot on a uh, virtual machine level. Uh, we, uh, we will support replication as well uh, at a virtual machine level. So very different from conventional storage. And where the value is, uh, it's fast and it's simple and it's very familiar to a, a virtual machine administrator. Interesting, so, so okay, so you were, you were, everybody says, you know, VMware breaks storage. You were, you were part of that problem, yeah. right? You, yeah. you, you caused that problem and then yeah. you popped out to solve it. Yes, so, right. so we, we, were, we were constrained by uh, not being able to, you know, have control of the SAN. Uh, and so we had to work at VMware with existing SANs. So um, essentially what we've done is we've made the, the network device friendly to the virtualization. And we've said that's, what, that's the environment to which it needs to work. So, so what the industry has done, EMC, NetApp, you know, Dell's, you know, HP 3PAR, et cetera, they have worked with, well, first of all, VMware put all these APIs. Yep. Because they said we got to solve this problem. Yep. I mean, you walk around the VM world two, even two years ago, talk to customers like, oh, storage, such a nightmare. Yeah. So VMware obviously put some resources on that, put out some APIs, and then it was up to the storage vendors to do some engineering work to yeah. integrate. So they've spent a lot of resource you know, doing that. Yeah. If I understand it correctly, you, you haven't had to do that because it's yeah. your architecture. Yeah, we basically, <clears throat> um, we, we, we will support uh, VAI, um, the VMware Array, uh, API for Array integration, um, but we've had a substantially uh, easier job of integrating within the virtual environment. So um, what VMware has, has done is really say, make the legacy storage somewhat friendly to a virtual environment. We've seen it really has to be easy, easy, easy. Um, and just uh, building some, something on top of existing storage is going to be somewhat better, but it's going to be it's ultimately just a, a patch to a very broken system. Bolt-on, I believe, is a the word that you're yeah. searching that's for. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Or Franken storage. Uh, uh, Franken uh, storage, right. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I, that, was, that was sort of, you just answered really, I guess, my next question, which was, aren't these uh, quote unquote traditional array vendors, which is interesting, to throw a three par into a traditional array vendor because they've been disrupting yeah, sure. legacy array vendors for a while now and they're they're all out still thriving it looks like but but my so my question is and I want to just follow up is is don't they essentially uh, close the gap on your fundamental advantage and you're saying no and and I'm going to ask again exactly why is that I, I know the bolt on okay but but can you be more specific what advantages are you going to bring that they're never going to be able to touch. Um, so I think there's actually two levels of advantage that, that we're going to bring. Um, the first is that um, we're, we're actually uh, 
we're, we're built on a, a new set of technologies, right? So we're built on Flash and SATA. Uh, and um, our file system is designed to be optimized, uh, or let me, let me actually compare with the traditional file system. So we're a NAS device. Uh, and a NAS device is designed to be able to deal with hundreds of thousands or uh, millions of files. It's designed to be able to deal with small files and large files. And in doing that, you end up compromising um, you know, at various uh, design trade-offs. Trade so if you compare that environment with a, a virtual machine environment, it's actually a fairly small number of large files. Uh, it is actually relatively infrequent access to metadata. Uh, and it's also um, an environment where uh, the, just the workload is, is very different from a traditional NAS device. So if you're, if you're building a system that is general purpose, uh, you're going to come up with a different file system design. And it's going to be both different in the internals, it's also going to be different from a user experience perspective. So if, if, let me give you an analogy. So Microsoft's approach to uh, mobile devices was to bring Windows to the, um, you know, the phone. Uh, and we've seen how successful that was. Uh, and so our approach, again, using the analogy, is much more you know, like the most popular iPhone device. And so from the ground up, designed from that in, for that environment. It's hard for observers to argue with that analogy, frankly. Um, and there are hundreds others that are in your favor. Um, having said that, uh, again, we watched companies like Compellent and 3PAR and Left Hand and Equalogic and, you know, disrupting that traditional storage. And, and of course what happens is the big whales buy the little minnows and life sure. goes on. And, and it, that would actually probably be a great thing for you if, if you had what happened to three bar and compelling. So <laughs> let's that's, that's not our let's, that's not our goal. No, so. I know. Yeah. It can't be or yeah. else you know you wouldn't succeed. Yeah. But, um, who can predict, right? So um, but when you uh, when when you Look at that lineup sure. uh, that you have got. You've got a lot of really good stuff in there. Right? You got yeah. all the bells and whistles. You, sure. You've engineered this thing to be state of the art, from the ground up, virtualization friendly. So, sure. This is a great affinity there. Uh, I wonder, uh, Kieran, if you could just take us through. Give us. Let's talk about the company. Yeah. Um, when were you founded? I uh, founded in 2008. 2008. Yeah. Um, you're the founder and CEO, is that right? Yeah, founder, co-founder. Co-founder. Uh, yeah. So Who are your other co-founders? Uh, so I have one other co-founder. Uh, he's uh, uh, Mark Gritter, uh, who is he was in the PhD program at Stanford. Was on a startup that was acquired by uh, by Son called Kalia, uh, and so he's a systems guy. Okay. Uh, so and and um, talk, uh, funding. Uh, we have um, our investments are from NEA. Uh, who was in Data Domain, they were in Zansource as well. Yeah, we know uh, NEA well. Yeah. Uh, 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 good and, friends of the Cube. And Lights, Lightspeed um, was, uh, okay. the, was the other. Yeah. Uh, excellent, okay, and uh, where are you with Headcount? Uh, we are we're 50 people. Yeah, 50 people? Yeah, 50 people, we're in Europe already. Uh, we're um, we have four people in Europe, uh, and we're, we're also selling in Japan as well. And um, you're shipping, obviously. We, when, did you, when was first, first GA? Yeah, we started shipping in April. Uh, and um, so we, you know, we, we, we've had, we, you know, we're in production um, at quite a few sites already. Um, so it's it's actually significantly faster adoption than we saw on the server side at VMware. I don't know if you've met with any of the Wikibon guys or SiliconANGLE people, but they, if you did, they probably told you this. But I'll tell the audience anyway. We did a, a study and a survey of our community, uh, and user community, and we we asked them. Um, who's your primary storage vendor and who's got the best storage for VMware? And, you know, of course you got a lot of EMC, a lot of NetApp, yep. you know, got some, you got plenty of 3PAR in there and, you know, some, some Equalogic and others, a little Tachi. Tintree came up. Right. And you're talking about, you know, a two, two and a half year old company. Yeah. And you do a survey like that. I've been doing surveys my whole life. And you would never see yep. a tiny little company like yours with 50 employees that's really just come out of stealth, essentially showing up on a survey like that. So that really impressed us. We got very excited. I mean, it was a small slice of the big yeah, pie, sure. but it, it said to us that there's a lot of promise there that people are taking notice already. So congratulations on getting the company off the ground, solving the problem, or starting to solve the problem that you created. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, we'll be watching, so thanks very much for coming okay. on theCUBE. Thanks very much, Dave. Thank you.